abiondemand.com. Automotive training you can receive anywhere, anytime. Your online training starts here. Well, you got to forget everything about a 6 liter and a 6.4. Well, almost, but this is a complete different engine. You may have seen previous videos regarding the Power Stroke 67, but it's a big different engine. And what I mean by that is reverse flow heads. That's probably the biggest difference is the reverse flow heads. The exhaust is in the engine valley, while the intake is on the outside where we traditionally see the exhaust manifold. So big difference on this engine, not to mention a whole new system. And uh, what I mean by that is a piezo common rail injection system. We got not one, but two cooling systems. We got an EGR system that's located on the right bank of the engine passenger side. And we also have quite an array of other emission controls, including your crankcase ventilation system. And then as we move downward, we see also the after treatment system. Now, since we're shooting this in 2017, please note the 2018 has already come out, not to mention the high cost involved in the serviceability, in other words, the drivability diagnosis and the repair of this engine due to the fact that some things are not easy to repair. A good example is I challenge you, look up the actual replacement of a um, oil pan. And in this case, that upper oil pan is not cheap to do, it's not easy to do, but it's a little bit challenging. But the 6.7 is not something we cannot learn, it's something we can learn and repair and understand. So as we look at the 6.7, just looking at the front of the engine, as you can see on the slide, we can see we have not one but two coolant pumps, aka known as water pumps. We also have an upper and lower oil pan. We have a traditional engine block, which is quite unique, and we also have a new numbering system of the cylinders. As I move to the next slide, you're going to notice that Ford, since this is an all Ford motor, you're going to see that the numbering of the cylinders has changed. When we look at the 6.0 and 6.4, we have traditionally seen odds and evens with number one being on the passenger side in the front, and we see one, three, five, and seven, while on the other side we saw two, four, six, and eight. Well, as you can see on the slide, the 6.7 is different. Now, some of you might not think this is important. It is very important. So when you get a misfire code, if so, if you're going to program IQA codes in the injector, yes, the injectors have IQA codes we're going to program in there, you need to know which cylinder you're programming and where they're at. So in this case, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. If you're a big Ford fanatic, you probably have noticed that, you know, Ford always used to number their big block and small block engines in the past this way, meaning one through four on one side and five, six, seven, and eight on the other side. Here's a better view of that for those you can understand. Again, number one being on the passenger side in the front. Well, it's all Ford. Well, almost. You got a Bosch piezo common rail injection system. You got an enhanced turbocharger system, and this is an enhanced because the early models had what we call a dual boost. Dual boost turbocharger with a wastegate, and that was eventually phased out with just a standard variable vein turbocharger. We have a reverse flow intake, and along we also have a closed crankcase ventilation system. That's a biggie, which I'll go over here. And you got two separate cooling systems with thermostats all over the place. You got your traditional thermostats too on the engine like we've seen on many traditional V8s. But then on the secondary system we have it on opposing sides of that secondary radiator. So that's different. Then we got a dual stage EGR cooler but that got changed also for the later models where we just got rid of the second stage. So that's different. Not to mention an enhanced after treatment system. We mentioned already with the 6.4 that we had the DOC and a DPF and now we have SER, Selective Catalyst Reduction, which is main objective is to reduce NOx. And then we have also the NOx reducing catalyst on the back of it. So, Coolant cooled charge air cooler. Holy cow, this is a little bit of a scary thing. Coolant cooled charge air cooler. What this means is that you now have a charge air cooler no longer traditionally in the front of the engine. You got it on the side. And instead of using ambient air or ram air going across it, we now have coolant cooling it. What that means is that what's very important to keep in mind is that uh, the truck needs to be checked periodically for checking the coolant. And there's a kit that Ford also sells that you need to purchase in order to test that coolant and make sure that it doesn't have any issues because it can cause premature failure of that charge air cooler. And you also have a redesigned intake manifold and that's a concern. Now more than ever, there's a lot of you technicians out there that like to do work the sloppy way. Okay, when you're looking at the turbocharger, for example, coolant 
and oil come from the bottom of the turbo. So torquing that turbo on precisely is very, very critical. Reusing the gasket is a no-no. So in this case, following procedures are going to save you a lot of headaches. It'd be awful to see you install a turbocharger and then wind up with a coolant or oil leak.